Hello and welcome to the channel. The Pharmacy Talks. Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the most important class of antihypertension drugs which are ACE inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. This Rahas inhibitors class of drugs includes Captopril, Inlipril, Perindipril, Lisinopril, Remipril, and many more. The most important drug amongst them is perindipril. The amazing fact is that all of these ACE inhibitors are pro-drugs, except captopril and lisinopril. The active form of these pro-drugs are inliprilat, perindiprilat, remiprilat, etc. Let me tell you another amazing fact which will blow your mind. Lisinopril is the lysine derivative of inliprilat which is the active form of inlipril, and that's why lisinopril is not a pro-drug. Let's now discuss the dual mechanism of action of ACE inhibitors in detail. For this, let's understand the mechanism of renin-angiotensin aldosterone system in normal condition. So, in normal conditions, the liver creates and releases a protein called angiotensinogen. This is then broken up by renin, an enzyme produced in the kidney, to form angiotensin 1. This Angiotensin 1 is then converted into angiotensin 2 by the enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE. This enzyme is expressed in various tissues and is especially abundant in lungs. The angiotensin 2 produced has its effect on adrenal cortex, adrenal medulla and arterial walls. In adrenal cortex, angiotensin 2 stimulates the release of aldosterone. Aldosterone is a steroid hormone secreted by adrenal glands. Its main role is to regulate salt and water in the body, thus having an effect on blood pressure. In abnormal conditions, aldosterone increases the sodium and water retention, thus increases volemia and stroke volume and this increases the cardiac output. Thus it increases the arterial blood pressure. In adrenal medulla, angiotensin 2 evokes a variety of physiological responses. In stress-like conditions, Adrenaline which is secreted and released by adrenal medulla which raises the heart rate and increase the cardiac output which ultimately increases blood pressure. In arterial walls, angiotensin 2 causes the muscular walls of small arteries to constrict, increasing blood pressure. This is how angiotensin 2 is responsible for hypertension. The ACE inhibitor inhibits the angiotensin converting enzyme. Therefore in the absence of angiotensin converting enzyme, angiotensin 1 is not converted to angiotensin 2. And thereby ACE inhibitors helps in controlling hypertension. Now let's also understand the mechanism of calicin-bradykinin system in normal condition. Kininogens are glycoproteins which are synthesized in endothelial cells and is produced mostly by the liver. This kininogen is converted to bradykinin in the presence of calicin which is an enzyme secreted in pancreas or other tissues. The other role of angiotensin converting enzyme is to cause breakdown of bradykinin into inactive substances. But in the presence of ACE inhibitors, there will be no breakdown of bradykinin. Now as bradykinin is a very potent vasodilator that exerts its vasodilatory actions by causing endothelial release of nitrogen monoxide. So there will be more vasodilation and decreased peripheral resistance and hence reduction in blood pressure. So this is how ACE inhibitors works in the body by its dual mechanism of action and this is how it helps in controlling. Now let's talk about the side effects of ACE inhibitors. Cough and angioneurotic angioedema are the side effect of ACE inhibitors as they increase the level of bradykinin. Dry, irritating and non-productive cough is the most common side effect. Perindipril has the least incidence of cough amongst all ACE inhibitors. Though angioneurotic angioedema is rare side effect yet it is life-threatening. Other side effects of ACE inhibitors are hyperkalemia and functioned renal insufficiency. Now let's talk about the contraindications with ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in patients with previous angioneurotic edema. These are contraindicated in patients with bilateral renal artery stenosis. It is a condition in which there is narrowing of the renal arteries. Atherosclerosis or fibromuscular dysplasia most often cause it. Patients with previous hyperkalemia and pregnancy are the other contraindications. That's all for this video. 
I hope we were able to explain the topic in an efficient manner and you find this video valuable. Please like this video and let us know in the comments if we were able to put you some value and knowledge addition. Also share this video with your friends. And lastly please subscribe to the channel. The Pharmacy Talk.